Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is essential for plant life, including aquatic plants. They use it during photosynthesis to create energy and release oxygen into the water. But here's the problem. As your aquarium fills with more and more plants, CO2 becomes limited. Without enough of it, your plants grow slowly, weaken, or even stop growing altogether. That's why adding CO2 can be the difference between a stagnant tank and a thriving ecosystem. In this video, I'll show you how to make your own DIY CO2 system. Cheap, easy, and surprisingly effective. Here's what you'll need. A 1.5 or 2 liter plastic bottle. First, remove the cap and the plastic ring around the neck. Just be careful not to cut the bottle itself. 200 grams of sugar. Baker's yeast, either dry or fresh. I use fresh, but dry yeast works just as well. Just one teaspoon is enough. At least one meter of airline tubing. A CO2 diffuser, I'll link the one I use down below. A CO2 ready cap like this one, which costs under two euros. But I'll also show you how to make a DIY alternative. A T connector. If you don't have one or prefer not to buy one, you can tie off a short section of tubing tightly with some knots. I'll be using the ready-made CO2 cap with a valve. But if you don't have one, here's a DIY solution. Heat up a fork and carefully make a small hole in the bottle cap. It should be smaller than the tube, so it fits tightly. Add hot glue going around the entry point for extra sealing. Cut the tip of the tube into a point to help guide it through. Push it through the cap. You might need pliers to pull it from the other side. Now let's put it all together. Connect the tubes into the T-connector. Make sure they go all the way in to avoid CO2 leaks. Two of the T-connector's ends should go to the valve cap. Unscrew the valves. Insert a piece of tubing with this rock inside or your check valve. And tighten everything securely. Repeat on the other side. Finally, attach your diffuser to the end of the tube going into the tank. Time to prepare the mixture. Dissolve the yeast in some lukewarm water. Make sure it's not too hot. High temperatures can kill the yeast since it's a living organism. If you're using tap water, let it sit for a few hours first so the chlorine can evaporate. Add the sugar to the bottle. I like to use a funnel to make things easier. Then fill about a third of the bottle with warm water. Close it up and shake it gently until all the sugar dissolves. You'll know it's ready when the water looks clear and there's no sugar sitting at the bottom. Now pour the yeast mixture into the bottle. Make sure to get it all in. Don't leave anything behind. Top up the bottle with more water, leaving a bit of space at the top, and give it another gentle shake. Then screw on your CO2 valve cap or your DIY version, if that's what you're using. Place the diffuser inside the tank. Ideally, put it under the filter outlet or wherever there's good water flow. This helps the CO2 dissolve better throughout the tank. Within a couple of hours, you should start seeing CO2 bubbles in the bottle. Look closely. You'll notice small bubbles rising to the top. And in the tank, the diffuser should already be releasing CO2. If it's not, give the bottle a gentle shake to jumpstart the process. The results can be almost immediate. Plants like Rikia start purling. Those tiny oxygen bubbles are a sign that photosynthesis is happening in overdrive. Here's my Rikia before CO2, and here it is the very next day. The difference is amazing. Watching your tank come alive with bubbles is beautiful, and your plants will love the boost. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll reply as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more aquarium tutorials and natural tank tips.